Hey STEM class. So right now what you're doing is you're looking at God's design and you're seeing that there's so many inventions, so many amazing inventions that man has actually figured out how to do based off of the patterns, the designs that are in nature. So we're looking at a bat wing and we're wondering how on earth that bat wing works and then we're trying to use that bat wing to actually make something really cool like a new airplane or like somebody in the class said a robot with bat wings. Our great master engineer, God himself, he actually created man after a pattern. He made us in his image. You were patterned after God, the creator himself. That's one reason why you like to invent things. That's one reason why we can invent things, is that we were made in his image. He designed us to not just be like him but to emulate who he is to reflect it to the world. If we look at Genesis 1 26 to 27 it says then God said let us make man in our image. Who is God talking to? Us in our? He's talking to himself believe it or not. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're all there at the beginning of creation. They're all having this discussion and yet they are all one being. And he says this, he says let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female, he created them. So we were made by the master engineer and after the pattern of himself. That's how he created us. Romans 8.29 says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined, which means again like we talked before, planned before he even started to create, predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. You see, we were made to be in Jesus' image, and Jesus was the exact representation of God himself. It says in Colossians 1.15, He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. And in Hebrews 1.3, it says, The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful word. After He had provided purification for sin, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So we were made in His image, but Jesus is the exact representation of God. That meant that when we looked at Jesus, we see God perfect. When we look at man, we see some problems. We're supposed to be his image, but see something happened. It got in the way of the image so that we don't see it very clearly. I have a mirror right here, and um, with it I can see myself, and I can see that, you know, my hair is not exactly perfect, and I can find mistakes or problems with my nose. I mean, we're really good at criticizing ourselves, especially when we look in the mirror, right? But this image, is this me? Like, is that me? And you're going to say, yes, it's you, Mrs. Schlegel. You looked in that mirror. That's you. But it's not me. It's not me. It's a reflection of me. But what happens if something gets in the way of the image? What if, um, I don't know, sin enters and the image gets all messed up? Okay, remember, I'm supposed to be an, an image of God. And really, this is more like the image is. There's a problem, isn't there? There's a bunch of something that makes it really hard to see that image. That's sin in our lives. And really what we need is we need to pray and ask God to help us because that sin has to be removed so that others can see the actual image of who God looks like. So when we say that man was made in the image of God and people look at man and they say, hey, that's not a very nice person, even though they claim to be a Christian, the problem isn't that God isn't a very nice God. The problem is, is that the person has some sin issues that are blocking the reflection that they are making of God. So they need to clean it up. Well, the way we clean it up, how do we do that? We ask God to forgive us of our sins. And He is faithful and just to, to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When God can cleanse us from all unrighteousness, you can then see the image again and see it a lot better. The thing is, is we're still in a fallen world. There's still some fogginess. And the Bible talks about that when we go to heaven, that we will be able to see clearly, that he will take away sin completely and, and we'll be able to see as we really are. 
2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, which is freedom. But we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. So this is a process. It's a process of becoming transformed into His image. So not only is this a good example, but also when we think about the sun and the moon, the moon is a reflection. The moon has no light of its own, not even a little bit, nothing. The only light the moon has is when it reflects the sun's light. So there are times where there's the, that the earth is in the way of the sun's light on the moon. And so you don't even see a moon. It's just, I mean, you can kind of look at it. It's just like a big block of rock up there. There's no light to it at all. And then there's other times where we call it a full moon, and that light is so bright that comes from the moon that you can actually read at night from the light of the moon. I've done, I've done it before. That's how bright it can be in a full moon. Jesus Christ has made us to be his reflection. And when we are living close to him, when we are living with our faces turned towards God, then and only then do we reflect his light to the world around us. When we aren't, when we have something in the way, it's kind of like, you know, the, the last quarter of the crescent of the moon. You only see a little bit of the light. It's still there, and you can still see it, but it's not as bright as it could be. And a lot of times the reason for that is we're just not focused on our attention on God on a, on a regular basis. Just, or there's sin in the way. And then there's others who, they don't want us to turn towards God at all. And they're living like that new moon where it's completely dark and there's no reflection of light at all. One of the Bible studies I read says it like this. It says, humanity was created in the image of God. We were created to reflect his very nature and character so that others could see a glimpse of the vastness of this one we call God. So the image that we have of who God is, is there for a purpose, for others to be able to see God. That's what we're here for. But sin gets in the way, and it's a problem, isn't it? It's not as though we're perfect. We do have craters, we have bumps, we have scratches, we have scars, we have storms that have affected us a whole lot. But God promises that if we live with our, our faces turned towards God, that he will shine his light through us into the world. So I just wanna encourage every single one of you to spend time this week turning your faces to God. Right now we're in a quarantine and you guys have plenty of time to sit and spend time with Jesus Christ, allowing him to shine through you. As you create your inventions this week, I just really hope that you think about the fact that our God, that master engineer, his top masterpiece was you. That's exactly what it was. He decided to make you in his image. 